with their new five-acre lions on the edge exhibit. The 600-acre Werribee Zoo had created the most realistic lion exhibit in the world. And now, the zoo is ready to put it to the test with the first release of two male and three female lions into the new habitat. That day, the visitors made their way to the exhibit. Designed to simulate rural Botswana, the trail includes a maze of tall elephant grass that helps to stir the public with the same element of fear experienced by villagers in the bush. We have a grassy maze so the children can really enjoy getting inside the maze here with sound scopes of lions. It's amazing. Children of all ages seem to jump into the air when a lion roars beside them. Tension was also high amongst the staff as they made a final walkthrough of the exhibit. Then, with everything in order, the keepers got the okay to open the gates. In the first habitat, the two males, both brothers, cautiously enter, assaulted by an array of new sights and smells wafting in from across the zoo. In the second habitat, the lionesses weren't nearly as cautious and rushed in to lay claim to their territory and to check out the people on the other side of the glass. The animals themselves, by the very nature of it, will be quite close to you. And uh, by a large glass window, at times they seem amazingly close, right up against you. In the second half of our viewing area, we've replaced the glass with mesh. This is so that you can get a real feel of the sound of lions when they roar, the smell of lions as they move past, just out of arm's reach the lions that come towards you. But while this up-close interaction with the visitors was stimulating for the lions, the main draw for their appetite were the sights and smells from the savannah below. The design of the, uh, the experience is set up to stimulate the animals, give them behavior language. That's really trying to vary their life so they continually kept alert. Now here we've got meerkats and we've got the lions in the background, a real predator prey situation. We've also got the lions being able to look down over the rest of the lower savannah and see zebras, eland, giraffe, the species they would naturally prey on. They get fed every day, so they're not worried about food, but it's there, it's giving them far more natural environment. Still, despite being well fed, it doesn't take long before these lions display some true predatory instincts. When out on the range, a limping attic causes both males and females to stir. For the zoo, they've got to act fast. In clear view of the lions, the weakened animal is likely to fire the big cat's instinct to go on the hunt, which means they can actually test their barriers. Immediately, the staff notifies the zoo's veterinarian, Dr. Jeff Pye. Jeff is the passionate caretaker of lions, as well as all the other animals in Werribee's Open Range Zoo. Here, he and his team travel to Savannah and treat injured or ailing animals on the spot. Only problem, first, they have to find them. Werribee being a, an open range zoo uh, has its good points and its bad points. Uh, some of the good points are is that uh, we can have our animals in quite large areas. Turning that coin up the other way, when you've got those large expanses, it makes my job a little bit more difficult when you do get a sick animal or a lame animal. Jeff's team patrols the savannah on the lookout to find the attic. Finally, they spot it. And with the lions above looking on, Jeff quickly separates the injured animal from the herd and tranquilizes it. Then, the team moves into position. Working quickly, Jeff examines the animal and then focuses on the injured leg. Something's wrong with the animal's hook. Only he'll have to dig deeper, which will require some heavier equipment. What we've done here is just uh, cleaned out the, off the hook wall and uh, saw that there was some dirt tracking into uh, under the sole there. And I've used the Dremel tool just to uh, get rid of all the um, hard tissue of the sole and track that dirt back. And we did hit a pocket of puff, uh, just a small amount. So we've just uh, flushed it with some iodine in uh, saline. And we're just gonna put some iodine ointment in there. Dressing over that. If I'm lucky, it lasts uh, three or four days. 
gives them uh, protects them off things they're healing. If I'm unlucky, it comes off after about three or four minutes after we reverse her. Jet gives the addict a drug to reverse the effects of the anesthesia. Within minutes, the animal is up and trotting, looking to join the herd as the lions go back to their business. Just another day on the open range at the Werribee Zoo. I must admit, I feel very comfortable about uh, the way we can look after our animals in this open range zoo, in terms of them being able to exhibit their natural behaviours, uh, them having freedom to run around and, and, I suppose, be as close to nature as they can. Where are these zoos, lions on the edge exhibit, creates the most authentic lion experience of any zoo in the world, and in doing so, has allowed its visitors to gain a greater understanding of these awesome creatures. This experience is, from my observation, world class in looking at the way that you can actually get animals to have enrichment in their lives while we use them as ambassadors to tell the story of what's going on in their world. The typical zoo, we stand on the outside, we look through bars, through the mesh, and we look at the animals inside. In our zoo, you don't see the bars, you don't see the fish. The animals seem to be free. Coming up, they're the most notorious of all scavengers. So how did one man transform a French quarry into an open-air sanctuary to save three vulture species from extinction? Next on Ultimate Zoo.